Long-time viewers of the channel know that I've been using this cooled, regulated astrophotography camera from TubeTech slash Rising Cam. They're basically the same thing. This is a camera with an APS-C size sensor, the IMX571 from Sony, which is the same sensor that is in cameras such as the ZWASI 2600mm RMC Pro cameras. So it's a very good quality sensor. It's actually an excellent sensor. And the reason why I had bought this camera over the ASI version the from ZW was simply that it was far cheaper. <laughs> and uh, at least for the uh, one-shot color version, which is what I have in my hand. And one of the other reasons was simply I wanted to use it with my Hyperstar telescope, which means that the camera would sit in front of the telescope. And because I'm using the Hyperstar C6 version on a 150 millimeter diameter aper aperture, uh, this camera is actually bigger than the central obstruction. So I wanted to make the camera as thin as possible. And it so happens that this one is considerably thinner than the uh, ZW version. So those were the two reasons why I went with this camera from Tobtech. And by the way, the name of the camera is the ATR3 CMOS 26000KPA. Of course it is. It is a very simple name. <laughs> And up to now, it's been working really, really well. And I have done a review of this camera in the past. Uh, I'll put the link to this review somewhere above. It's a really good camera and it's uh, I've really, really enjoyed it. And it's been my uh, daily driver <laughs> or nightly driver for quite a while now. And Taupe Tech cameras are so popular that there are tons of brands these days that actually rebrand the Taupe Tech cameras and sell them under different brands. And it's really good because I bought this camera off of AliExpress shipped directly from China. But obviously that was kind of a roll of the dice. And now there are other com companies such as Ogma that sell the same camera under their own colors. Uh, in the US with US-based support, right? So that can be very important uh, for, for people uh, located in the US who don't trust directly uh, to import things from China and rolling the dice like that. Uh, by the way, of course, I'll put the links to those cameras directly in the description. So this has been serving me very well. It is a cooled regulated camera. I typically use it at minus 10 degrees. The, the sensor is extremely low noise. Uh, it has a dew heater built in. Everything's working great with it. But Tech reached out to me out of the blue and told me like, by the way, this is kind of like the old version of the camera. There's uh, the same camera, same number, uh, same brand, same everything, but we've basically updated it. And so we want to send you an updated version of the camera, which I said, yeah, sure. And I asked, you know, what are the conditions? And there's basically no conditions like, oh, you don't need to do a review. You don't need to do anything, just like use it can't say no to that, right? So this is what I received, the new version of the camera. And in this video, I want to look at the differences that we can see between the two cameras, how the older version that I have in my right hand here and the newer version that I have here are different. And that lets me basically update the review. The first difference comes with how the cameras appear from the front. They are very different. This is the old version and this is the new version. And the new version has kind of like a, a thicker ring that sticks out with some screw holes in there. And if in particular we look at these screw holes, like around those four screw holes, one, two, and then two more on the other side, those are apparently built to be uh, compatible with ZW filter wheel uh, screw hole uh, spacing so that instead of just screwing in a filter wheel, you can actually attach it via screws directly to the camera, just like you can with other ZW cameras. So that's one big difference. But another big difference that I saw and that I found super cool actually is that the camera, just like the ASI 2600mm or MC from ZW, has a back focus of 17.5 millimeters, except that this back focus can be made even shorter. How you can achieve that is by loosening the four screws that we have in the front, and I can just remove that ring from the front. And using the same four screws, I can put in this adapter in its place. And that's how it ends up looking like. And instead of a female M42 plug, we have a male M42 here now. And with this male M42, the back focus is now just 12.5 millimeters instead of 17.5 millimeters. And I personally think that's awesome. It makes, it adds five millimeters of 
available back focus. And if you've been in astrophotography for a while, you know how amazing five more millimeters can be. And you know how often you've cursed against that one millimeter of back focus that prevents you from getting good images, that kind of stuff. So this is really, really cool to be able to see such a feature in the camera. I, I, my guess is that they could make even the female adapter back focus smaller with different adapters, which could be a really good idea. Um, but they prefer to keep the same back focus as the W cameras because then it makes them like cross compatible with accessories, which is a good idea. What other differences do we see? It's not all good, but for now, everything is uh, has been decent. Uh, one of the differences we see is that the newer version on my left is slightly taller than the older version, which is fine, but for my Hyperstar um, dew shield is actually a bit too long. Just that has made it a bit more difficult to use. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Another difference, and I think it's an improvement that I've seen, is how the fins work. The fins on the uh, heat spreader or heat exchanger, which are slightly sticking out, very slightly sticking out in some places from the camera body on my old Rising Cam slash Dope Tech camera. And I do believe that this slight sticking out might have been an issue for some of the hyperstar imaging when the camera is in front of the scope and those fins were actually causing some small diffraction spikes on the stars. So with the new version, these grids are actually recessed. The, the, the camera body is perfectly smooth. So with regards to hyperstar, I think this is much better. But this is like only for hyperstar C6 where the camera is bigger than the central obstruction. So it's a very corner case. Now where things get a bit less Less good is on the face of it those two cameras at the back they look pretty much the same uh, but the old one has recessed LEDs while the new one has them slightly sticking out. I've noticed that on the old one I could just cover these with electrical tape and then there would be no more light uh, leaking from the camera whatsoever, which is super important for instances of astrophotography where the camera is in front of the telescope, like Raza or Hyperstar. But on the new camera, even if I put electrical tape on top of these LED diffusers, there are actually LEDs on the board behind the little LED diffusers there, and uh, those cause issues because I see light, light seeping out of the, the fan opening here, the airflow opening here. Uh, at the back, which is a bit of a problem. I've notified uh, Taupe Tech about that, so let's see what they come up with in the future. So with that, let's have a quick look inside the camera so we can see the differences that were done structurally within the camera as well. Before we do that, don't forget to go down below, subscribe, like, leave a comment. It really helps the channel out. And if you're feeling generous, you could join the channel or even join as a Patreon to support me. Uh, some ranks have access to my videos without ads and ahead of time. And thanks to all of my supporters on the channel and on Patreon, I've been able to buy a software that allows me to get better audio in my videos and also uh, have some AI processing on top to enhance the image quality. So you guys truly make a difference. Thank you so much. Anyway, let me open up those cameras and show you how they look like. Opening the camera is actually super easy. You have four long screws here at the back. You just unscrew them and then you have access to the internals. Obviously, you should not touch the uh, screw that is at the front here because this is access to an argon purged or whatever chamber that should uh, ha not have any trace of humidity inside. So don't touch that one. Touch only the screws that are at the back to open the camera if you do so. So this is the inside of the old camera. And you can see with the old camera, the LEDs were actually huge LEDs. And those were the ones that were kind of sticking out in the recessed uh, board. And so if I were to cover them, there's no more light le leakage whatsoever. That's very good to avoid any light leakage. On the old camera as well, you can see that the fan here is within the PCB boards. It's not touching anything. It's basically suspended by those spring there, springs there. And this is to avoid vibrations that you can have with cold cameras. And I've done a video on the topic uh, recently. I'll put the link above somewhere. So that's how the old camera looks like. This is the newer camera. And you can see the LEDs are now directly on the board. And so to in order to not have any light seeping out, just putting tape on the outside on the camera body is not enough because those LEDs will just diffuse light inside here and that will go out 
of the vent at the back. And so I need to cover the LEDs here directly with some electrical tape, which is what I've done here. So now I will no longer get any light, although I see a very faint light somewhere within those PCBs. I'm still checking where it's coming from, uh, but it didn't seem to affect my Hyperstar when I used it. So that is kind of a drawback of the new design. And if you do buy the camera right now, you'd be getting that new design. So if you're using it with Raza or Hyperstar, be prepared to quickly open it and put some electrical tape on those LEDs there that are sitting directly on the board. Finally, another difference with the design is how the fan is attached to the camera. There's actually a platform on top of the heat spreader that's very less in contact with everything that then has silicon feet connected to the fan. This is again to avoid vibrations that can be very important at long focal lengths. Now in practical use, it's the same sensor, it's the same system, everything works great. And we also get uh, up-to-date drivers directly from the uh, Topetech website. If you're using Nina, the drivers are built into Nina, although you can update them uh, on your own. And if you're using the nightly versions of Nina, then those drivers will get updated with the nightly versions as well. So just something to keep in mind. But otherwise, like those two versions of exactly the same camera, except that now we can only get the newer one, they are functionally exactly the same. So you can just refer to my old review to see how well it works. And otherwise, these are the main differences that I've been able to see. So just an FYI, if you do buy the blue camera or any of its variants today, you'll be getting the newest version, which, which has quite a few advantages slash enhancements over the old version, but has like a couple of drawbacks that I mentioned. With that, as always, Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, etc. It really helps the channel out. Again, thank you so much to all of my Patreon and channel members. You truly make the difference. With that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.